Hi everyone. Uh, I know this is not the title in the program, so uh, but this is what I'm going to talk about. So you can uh, you have like three seconds to escape uh, if this is not of interest. But I I'll try to uh, do the best to live up to uh, to the other title of uh, international transfers on blockchain. Uh, but what I want to talk to you about today is design thinking in blockchain. How do you make sure that your technology, which is most likely going to be blockchain, um, if you are here today, uh, actually solves a real need in the market? And um, so I'm from Hofsi, and what we do is that we are doing banking for small businesses made awesome. And we actually built some of the modules on blockchain. Uh, so we have experience with this, but we only use blockchain where it actually makes sense to do it. Um, so this is a little bit about me. Um, I'm a co-founder of Hofsi, and before that I was at uh, the Innovation Lab of Every Financial Services, where I was teaching banks to disrupt themselves before the startups beat them to it. And then I have uh, more than 10 years experience in, uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, founding and co-founding startups. Some of them failed. Uh, a few of them were sold. Um, so I think this is a good example of what we see today. Uh, a lot of banks and financial institutions are looking at blockchain. They want block spurts. Uh, they want hipster offices. Um, but the real question here is, the guy in the, in the blue, uh, light blue shirt is, how can we make a, like, a blockchain that actually solves a uh, customer problem? And as you can see, he's thrown out of the window, uh, which is the problem that I observe a lot of the times here, is that people are running around talking about blockchain, having the answer, but they haven't, right yes, uh, the, uh, they haven't asked the right questions yet. So can we turn this around and start asking the right questions, and then we can look at the answer and see if blockchain is the right technology to use. So. The world is changing, and that's also, I think, what we're seeing now. Uh, there's no more business as usual, especially not in banking. Um, they're pretty scared, and a lot of McKinsey, Accenture, and the other consultants have uh, predicted that if banks don't manage to digitize and to become innovative, they will die. And uh, McKinsey has this do or die sentence that they use a lot um, to, to show this. And um, if we look more traditionally, uh, damn it. Okay, so here was supposed to be two uh, circles, <laughs> but I think there's something wrong with the presentation. Um, but uh, you have two circles. One of them is business, uh, it's the viability of what you're doing. The other circle is um, the technicality, the feasibility. Is this possible to do technical wise? And these two circles are overlapping. So traditionally, banks have been looking into these two circles, they've been looking into the business model. Is this something we can earn money on? And they've been looking into the technically feasibility. Is this something we can actually do? And then they've been developing a lot of things. It's often engineers behind that doing that. And what they have forgot a little bit is the third circle that is very central in design thinking. And that's about desirability. How desirable is this to the end user, to the human actually using it? Is this solving a real need? And, um, and we have to look at that. This, and the problem is that blockchain is in the technical circle. And that's what we see traditionally that bank has very much developed from. And we need to find where all these th three circles are overlapping. And a lot of the blockchain solutions out there today will most likely not uh, solve a real human need. Uh, so let me go past this, yeah. So if we go move a little bit back and see how important service is, it's only 1% that feels that they're actually getting a good service consistently. And 89% are willing to change their provider after experiencing a bad service. So this is pretty big. You have a lot of people here running around for better alternatives. If only 1% really feel that they get a good service. And also, we have, uh, studies show that 53% of those getting a good service it actually triggers the same things in the brain as feeling loved. So by giving people a good service, maybe by using blockchain, you can actually trigger them feeling loved. So you have a big power here as a service provider to do this. 
and I'm sure blockchain can help. So this is all about the feelings, the emotions that the technology, which can be blockchain, can trigger in these people. But we have to take a step back and look at the feelings first and foremost. So we have to remove this industrial mindset that a lot of companies has had, especially financial institutions and banks, and we have to get a bit more emotional. And the way we can do this is to look at design thinking, service design. It has a lot of name. It's also been hyped, um, just like blockchain. Uh, but user-centered design is basically understanding what is your user's need, how do they think and how do they behave, and how can we incorporate that understanding into every aspect of the proce process. That does not mean that you incorporate it at the end when you have developed the te blockchain technology and then you look at, oh, how can we make this look nice or put something on top of it or wrap it in a nice package. You have to start out with the need and then you can look at blockchain, how it helps. So really solving these wants and needs. And blockchain can do that. If we look at faster and cheaper, which blockchain enables, that's actually, can, that can provide a great customer experience and a great service, but you have to do it the right way and you have to apply it where it really uh, matters and not where there might be a better technology. Um, so this is a little bit uh, here on the left, you see uh, where blockchain fits into the system, it's a technology and um, it's a product system and you can see that the red is effort and the blue is value creation and you actually get less uh, value out of the effort you put in here unless you also match it with the right hand side which is, which is the design thinking, service design side and this is where the real value comes in so if you, if you manage to match this, especially the customer experience, you can see that there's a really good return on value um, in, in, in uh, the effort that you, you invest. If you manage to match this with the right technology, for example, blockchain, making it faster, cheaper, with a great customer experience, then you're onto something, and then blockchain, you get even more out of it. Very close. <laughs> Sorry? Got it a little close. Okay, yeah. So, uh, you know Uber, it's a great service. They don't use blockchain, but I don't care what they use. They could use blockchain. What is important to me is that they satisfy a need I have and the payments exist right in my pocket. I don't have to check it out unless I want to. This is my bank, and this is a Danish bank, and it's closed during the night. <laughs> Why is that? What if I can have sleepless nights because I forgot to pay that bill? Why should it be closed? Like that's not a very good user experience. And if banks are looking at blockchain the way that some of the banks have previously using, been developing technology, then this is what happens. And it's so important to have the end user in mind even when developing blockchain. So to end it off, let's start listening to that guy to the right and uh, listen to what he has to say and try to see if we can ask the right questions before we find an answer. Thanks. <laughs>